a reading from the book a reading from the first book of Samuel in those days the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli and the, Lord, the word of the Lord was rare in those days there was no frequent vision at that time Eli whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of, the, of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood forth, calling us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak. For your servant hears the word of the Lord. Response to the Psalm. See. I have come, Lord, to do your will. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. We shall le be led by the choir.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, indeed I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For in his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that I may possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and uh, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, At that time, some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign shall be given to it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. We are gathered here as members of the family of the Archdiocese of Kisumu to celebrate the gift of the priesthood in two of our brothers who have served God for 25 years. And may our two brothers, please, you know, we can't take for granted. People might not be knowing you. Once more, just step forward. Gabriel and uh, Peter, step forward. These are our brothers. Let us give them a clap. (laughs) 
Anybody who is 25 years old here, please stand up. Anybody 25 years old? 20, yes, please come forward. Please come forward. Just come. 24 years old. That is how old Gabriel and Peter are. Just come and stand next to them here. And there is another one and another one. Yes, welcome. Just imagine, when they were being ordained, they were being born. <laughs> I want to ask them secret questions. Go on here. asking a very simple question, the first one. Are you married? <laughs> number one, number two, number three told me no. My second question, my second question was, are you going to become a sister? No. <laughs> and then number two, I asked him, are you going to become a priest? Told me, I don't think so. <laughs> Number three told me, no, but Father Gabriel gave me first Holy Communion. So that's how serious it is. Number four told me, he is married. Okay, he's married. <laughs> so for him, I'm only going to ask him to give us his son or his daughter to come and join us. Okay? But these three, I'm asking them to reconsider, to reconsider. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming for this celebration. And may God bless you. It's nice to see that God keeps on regenerating us. As they are aging after ordination, God gives us new other gifts in the church. They will continue with the faith, isn't it? Let us give them a clap. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So these are our two jubilarians, Father Gabriel Aloka, Father Peter Ochieng, currently serving in Dori Parish, currently serving in Yogo Parish. We pray that God continues to bless them, to continue being committed to their vocation, to serve Christ selflessly and to be faithful to the church. And please pray for them, okay? Thank you. Please be seated. Give them a clap. The call of Samuel. I opted that we reflect on the call of Samuel because even though we are not celebrating the first day of their ordination, we are celebrating the 25th year of their ordination, but the call of Samuel is still applicable to us, even in the year of Jubilee, because it invites us to continue soul searching and asking ourselves, have I responded appropriately, adequately, 
to the invitation of God to serve him? Samuel was in the right place when he received the vocation from God. He was ministering under Eli in the temple at Shiloh. He was ministering under Eli and he was forming him. He was helping him. He was directing him so much so that when Samuel heard the voice calling him, he rushed to the trusted mentor, Eli, to ask him, you called me. And he told him, no. So Samuel goes to a person whom he trusts to get the direction of his life. You called me. I heard your voice. And Eli told him, go back and rest. Three times he came to him. The third time he told him, go back and sleep. If you hear a voice again, respond like this. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. The first three times he said, Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Nipo. The third time, Ongea Bwana. Utumishiwako anasikia. Eli told Samuel. And the direction, the counsel given by Eli to Samuel was correct. The world needs very many Eli's today. And pray among them, be our priests to whom the young people will go, to whom the old people will go, to whom the children will go, to seek counsel, to listen for the way to direct their lives in ways that are pleasing to God. And the celebration of our two priests here is partially a celebration of that. For 25 years, they have been allies in the lives of many people, giving direction to their lives. Go back when you hear, say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. They have said this during the celebration of sacraments, the sacrament of baptism, the priests, the two of them, have indicated to you whom to listen to, whose voice to hear. In the celebration of the sacrament of First Holy Communion, they have done the same. During the sacrament of reconciliation, confession, kitubiyo, they do the same, especially Kitubio. A priest at a very personal level gives you indicators as to how to reorganize your life to be pleasing to God, telling you in many words, go, you hear the voice of the Lord, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. But not only that, even when he's preparing you for confirmation, while awaiting the coming of the bishop, he's doing the same. When he's preparing you for marriage and during marriage, celebration, he's doing exactly that. He's telling you whom to listen to, giving guidance 
But even during my shauri in the office, you come with many challenges. Want the guidance of the priest? He is behaving like Eli, giving guidance, direction to our lives. It is because of this that we celebrate them and they have touched the lives of many wherever they have worked and now presently in Yogo and in Ndori. But that is not all. They don't stop at marriage. They even go to the sacrament of the sick. When sick calls, come, so and so is sick, father come. Even when he's about to sit down for lunch, he has to put the lunch aside and rush. Because sick call is a matter of life and death. It can't wait for lunch. And he goes to give direction to life, even during those difficult times when you need the strengthening of the spirit and the body. But that is not even all. Even during the last rituals of life, when you lie here in state, the priest still has to do his part to commemorate Christian life, a life well lived by one of us. He has to celebrate the Requiem Mass, he has to celebrate the funeral mass, he has to go and preside over the burial. I don't want to ask Father Gabriel how many Christians he has buried. There must be many. Father Peter, how many Christians he has buried? There must be many. Yet, that is part of his life as a priest to accompany Christian life right from the womb to the tomb, from baptism up to the burial. That is what they have been doing, and that is what we are celebrating, the Eli's in our life. However, there is a small detail that we should not forget. Small detail. Somebody had my book. I gave somebody my book. This is a small detail. The life of Eli that we should never, thank you, we should never forget. It is not just that he gave direction to the life of Samuel. Behind the story of Samuel and Eli, there is another story, the story of failure. When you read the story of Samuel, this is a detail about the story of Samuel that we should never forget. Behind the story of Samuel is the story of failure. The tragic story of failure as a parent and as a leader. And that is the reason why God is calling Samuel. Many times, when we read the story of Samuel, we stop at the vocation part. But we rarely listen to why God was calling Samuel. Listen to why God was calling Samuel. In the reading of today, the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. We normally stop at 10. But listen to the other part. After he has been called, listen to what God is telling Samuel. Yahweh then said to Samuel, I am going to do something in Israel 
which will make the ears of all who hear it to ring. I shall carry out that day against Eli everything that I have said about his family from beginning to end. You are to tell him that I condemn his family forever. Since he is aware that his sons have been cursing God and yet has not corrected them. Therefore, God says, I swear it the family of Eli. No sacrifice or offering shall ever expiate the guilt of Eli's family. Samuel lay where he was until morning and then opened the doors of Yahweh's temple. Samuel was afraid to tell Eli about the vision. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, here I am, he replied. Eli asked, what message did he give you? Please do not hide it from me. May God bring unnameable ills on you and worse ones too if you hide from me anything of what he said to you. Samuel then told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Eli said, He is Yahweh. Let him do what he thinks good. Imagine if God called you and sent you to your parish priest and go and tell your parish priest, I am about to destroy him. What do you do? Kama mungu wange kuita, akuambie, enda uambie, paroko wako, imi nataka kumuangamiza sahi. Utaenda ukikimbia? Si utashtuka? Utashtuka. Enda umuambia askofu, nimekasirika na ye. Utashtuka. Kwanza. Na hivu ndi ilikuwa na Samuel. Eli ni mwalimu wake. Amemtunza. Amemkuza. Amemsaidia. Amemfundisha vitu vingi. Alafu Mungu anamuita anamtuma kwa Eli amwambie ujumbe mzito juu ya familia yake kwamba familia yake ii karibu kuangamizwa. Huu ni kwa ujumbe mzito. Kwa ke Samueli, ilikuwa chaka moto kubwa. Ndiyo sababu asubui, alikuwa amuka, aliogopa kumuambia. Lekini hile kumuambia, niambie. Kwa sababu, usipo niambia, na ya kufanyikie, hata mabaya zaidi. Samueli, akaogopa akamwambia yote ambayo Mungu alikuwa amemwambia. Kwa nini Mungu alimwambia? Kwa sababu watoto wa Eli walikuwa wamekosea na Eli hakuwakosoa. Walikuwa makoani, walikuwa mapadri. Lakini walitenda mambo yasiyofaa mbele za Mungu. Na Mungu alikasirika na wao walitumia vibaya kipaji cha upande na kwa sababu baba yao hakuwakosoa Mungu anamwadhibu God wants to punish Eli because his children misbehaved with the priesthood and he did not correct them this is the, stra- the tragic story behind the call of Samuel. God has rejected Hophni and Phineas 
the two sons of Eli. Yes, rejected them. They are bad sons. In their place, he is choosing Samuel. So apart from the direction Eli is giving the life of Samuel, he is a sad man. Because he has been told already this message. It's as if Eli is saying, this is perhaps my second chance. Let me try to correct the mistakes I made with my sons. I helped Samuel. The call of Samuel is judgment to Eli. If God gives us gifts and we don't use them well, God's work will not stop. It will not stop. God will choose somebody else to do it. But the choice of somebody else means judgment on our part. If you have talent, God has given you to use it in the church, in your parish, and you don't use it, God will choose somebody else. And the choice of somebody else is judgment on your part, as it happened to Eli. Yet, for a servant of God, you must be courageous enough to speak even the big truth to people. Tell them the truth under the command of God. Do not be afraid. And Samuel was not afraid. Now, the call of a priest now shifts from being the call of Eli and turns to be the call of Samuel. One who tells the truth to everybody, even when it is bitter truth. A priest cannot keep quiet. Because if he keeps quiet, when things are going wrong, he becomes complicit. As we celebrate the Silver Jubilee of our brothers here, we celebrate the constant reminder to us, priests, that we have a vocation that is not ours. It comes from God, and God has put us on mission. And as priests, we should not be afraid to say the hard things to people in their lives. Those hard things might be for their salvation. Just as Samuel learned. But Eli failed to say the hard things to his sons, Hophni and Phineas. And because of that, they got lost. God has rejected them. In the next verse, they are going to die. After they die, Eli is also going to die. But it's the tragic truth behind the call of Samuel. And every priest, every day of our life, we remember this truth. God has invited us to be truthful with people. Gentle, but truthful with people. Tell people the truth. The truth of God. It is my prayer that our two priests have been doing that for the last 25 years. Correcting people, telling people the hard things about faith in God. Sometimes it happens personally, in personal encounters, when people come to the office for mashauri, tell people, no, you can't divorce your wife. There is nothing to make you divorce your wife. And a priest must tell you the truth. This marriage was properly celebrated. You can't marry another wife when the one with whom you marry in the church is still alive. It's against the law of God. A priest must firmly resist the temptation to make things look simple around the sacrament of marriage. Because today, it's very tempting. We have to tell you, no, marriage once celebrated 
a man and a woman, it is not easy to bring that apart, to allow you to get another one. A priest must be firm and truthful. Should not make you just to be happy by appearing things look easy. That is the work of a priest. In the confession, the priest will tell you, now, the way you are moving, this is becoming too much. You need to do something. Because at the end of every confession, we have the act of contrition. But the way you are leading your life, it is not helping you. It's also good for you to be consistent with your confessor. Don't change confessors every week. You understand? Don't change confessors every week. Sometimes it's good to be consistent with the confessor to help you, to help you, to accompany you, to journey with you. Because it is a sacrament. It's a journey of Christianity. As much as possible, if you can be consistent with your confessor, the better. Because now he understands you and helps you. Father Gabriel and Father Peter, thank you for your service to the people of God in the Archdiocese of Kisumu. In many ways, you have been Eli's, directing people as he did to Samuel. And in many more ways, you have been like Samuel, listening to the voice of God, responding, yes, and telling God, here I am, speak, I'm listening. And telling people the truth about Christian life, the truth about Christ, the truth about God, the truth about the church. We celebrate this in their 25 years of service. And we thank God for them. But we also thank God for you because you support our priests a lot. Without you, there is not much we can do. So as we celebrate our priests, I take the occasion to thank our Christian faithful, to thank religious men and women who accompany priests along their way. Thank you for your support. May the Lord continue to bless you we disappoint you. But please, forgive us. Do you understand? Sometimes we disappoint you. Sometimes we do crazy things. Please forgive us. It is human weakness. These 25 years, there may be times when Peter did some one or two crazy things. Please forgive him. Isn't it? And remember the good things he did. There may be one or twice when Gabriel may have done crazy things. Those are only two or three. Please forgive him. Remember the many good things he did, isn't it? And please pray for us. Pray for us that we may serve you with commitment and dedication. That whenever we wake up in the morning, we're waking up thinking about service to the people of God service to you, service to the church, and service to Christ, to Mosif Yesu Christ.
for the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. Let us pray to the Lord. have vowed themselves to God that with their help they may faithfully keep to their resolve. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace among nations that delivered from all turmoil, the peoples may serve God in freedom of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sicknesses, that, may, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves gathered here, that as God does not cease to sustain us, with the things of this life, we may know how to use them in such a way that we may hold even now to the things that endure forever. Let us pray to the Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you this sacrifice of praise, O oh Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, for that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as that blemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so, we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end as we acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who hold to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, myself, your unworthy servant, Father Gabriel, and Father Peter, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with all whose memory we believe in, especially the glorious everlasting Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph as our dear brother and daughter Matthews, Peter and Paul, and James, John, Thomas, Emily, Bartholomew, Matthew. Simon and Jude, Venom, Jesus, Clement, Jesus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christopher, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and the Lamb. And all your sins, we ask that through the merits and prayers, in all things you may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, all our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Hail, 
لنفمبلا ایمان بین Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to the glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased, O Lord, to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of the high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice, the spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask Almighty God, command that these gifts be born by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have gone before us in the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us, also, your servants, who do sin us, fall in your abundant mercy, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostle and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcelino, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Anastasia, and all your saints admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not being our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O oh Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, but graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Offer, offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Thank uh-huh.